because of affliction or persecution because of the word, or the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, because his words were difficult. As a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. Apostasy. What we're talking about here, what we see in John 6, 6, is, a, is falling away. It is desertion. It is apostasy. And listen, they don't have to go out and become Buddhists or Hindus or Muslims or atheists when they walk away. Keep doing what they were doing. They just go to another church. One of the many that preaches a message that tickles their ears and plays to their own desires. And there are plenty of those to go around. A lot of places to choose. Welcome to the Church of Laodicea. I mean, that's the epitome of this, where the congregation is having a great time inside. And they're boasting of how great things are, while the Word of God Himself stands outside, unwelcome and uninvited inside to participate in their religious worship services. Isn't that true? Yes, absolutely. That's the picture of the Church of Laodicea. Now, I hope you caught the verbal quotes that I put around the word worship. You have to wonder what they're worshiping inside the Church of Laodicea. But they're worshiping something. You know, it was Bob Dylan that wrote a song and said, uh, you got to serve somebody, right? Everybody's going to serve somebody. Man was designed and built, created to praise, to worship God. And as Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Matthew 6, 24. So that leads me to bring to our attention, well, what happens if people like those in Laodicea are boasting Dare I say, worshiping what they have accomplished? Because certainly the Lord wasn't involved. And isn't that what they're doing? We're rich, we have need of nothing. They're boasting in what they've accomplished. <clears throat> well, bear that in mind as I read to you from Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 22. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. That's what they were doing on Bethel. Mm -hmm. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their woman exchanged a natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire towards one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. Read it. Go read it. That's it. Like I said, you know, I'm not asking you to take my word for it in this. Go see what the Word of God says. Homosexuality, which is now promoted and celebrated in the world around us and, and much of the church around us, it is indeed a sin. But it is also a symptom of a far greater sin. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. What is the truth of God? His word. His, his truth is revealed to us through his word. They've exchanged it. They have walked away from his word. What was happening in the time of Paul was what was happening in the time of Amos. A rejection of God's word. And when you reject God's word, it can only lead to this terrible, terrible result, right? And think about this. I've said Satan has chosen homosexuality as his, his choice battlefield. Well, because you can disguise it as love. Homosexuality is all about love. No, it is not. 
homosexuality is about sex. It is, listen, it's not about a man loving a man. We're commanded to love each other. I love you, Mark. I don't want to have sex with you, but I love you. It's not about love, it's about sex. So he's disguising. Everybody's talking about, well, don't you care that people, these people love each other? Go ahead and love each other. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But it doesn't have to manifest, manifest itself as a sexual act. You see, what happened was because they rejected the Word of God, because they traded the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, for a lie, their love became perverted. Go read what I just read to you from Romans chapter 1 again and see what we're talking about is perversion. But the act follows the truth that it's their love that has been perverted. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And above all, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might.